Hello there. My name is Arnik and welcome to the Tech Mecca channel. Are you fear to face the power plant job interview? Are you nervous about how the interview session going to be in power plant job and what question ask in power plant interview? Do you want to overcome your fears of power plant job interview? Then this power plant interview question tutorials is best suited for you. Here we introduce top 12 interview questions that should ask in power plant interview, cooling tower question. Hope this cooling tower interview questions will fulfill your desire for job preparation. I promise you that if you watch this tutorial from beginning to end, it will not only help you join your cooling tower interview preparation but also helps for future. Please do make sure you subscribe to the channel by clicking the red button below the video, and that you won't miss out on any of the weekly training videos that I upload. Question number 1. What is a cooling tower? Answer. Cooling tower is one type of heat exchanger. It received hot water from source and decreased the temperature of the same and supply it to source. It decreased the temperature by decreasing the pressure of incoming water. Question number 2. What are the types of cooling tower? Answer. Classification of cooling tower are, according to the ventilation mode, it is divided into, natural ventilation cooling tower, mechanical ventilation cooling tower, mixed ventilation cooling tower. According to the contact mode of water and air, wet cooling tower, dry cooling tower, dry wet cooling tower. According to the flow direction of hot water and air, counter flow cooling tower, cross flow, direct AC, cooling tower, mixed flow cooling tower. Question number 3. What is the working principle of cooling towers? Answer. The hot water is sprayed from the top of the tower, while the air is made to flow from the bottom of the tower to the top. This air cools the hot water in the cooling tower. Air vaporizes a small percentage of water, thereby cooling the remaining water. The air absorbs the heat and leaves at the top of the tower and cooled water leaves at the bottom and recirculated to the condenser. Question number 4. What is the difference between cooling tower and condenser? Answer. Condenser is nothing but one kind of heat exchanger with exchanges heat from hot fluid to cold one. Basically the reason behind calling it condenser is because by doing heat transfer it condenses, phase change, the fluid. As in in case of steam power plant it condenses steam into water, in case of refrigerator it condenses refrigerant which is coming out from compressor. Cooling tower is one type of heat exchanger. It received hot water from source and decreased the temperature of the same and supply it to source. It decreased the temperature by decreasing the pressure of incoming water. Welcome to my channel. Please like, share, comment and subscribe the bell icon. And watching my video. Question number 5. Difference between forced draft and induced draft cooling towers? Answer. If the fan is located at the bottom of the tower and air is blown by the fan up through the descending water it is called as forced draft cooling towers. If the fan is located at the top of the tower and air enters through the louvers located on the tower's side and drawn up and discharged through the fan casing, it is called as induced draft. Question number 6. What are the advantages of induced draft cooling tower over forced draft cooling tower? Answer. The advantages of induced draft cooling tower over forced draft cooling tower are. The outlet water comes in contact with the driest air and warmest water comes in contact with most humid air. The recirculation is seldom a problem. The first cost is low due to the reduction in pump power consumption. Question number 7. What are the advantages of hyperbolic natural draft cooling towers? Answer. The advantages of hyperbolic natural draft cooling towers, since no fans are used power cost and auxiliary equipment's cost is reduced. Hyperbolic tower chimney creates its own draft even when there is no wind, ground fogging and warm air recirculation are avoided in hyperbolic towers, the structure is more or less self-supported. Question number 8. What are the factors that affect the rate of evaporation of water in cooling towers? Answer. The factors that affect the rate of evaporation of water in cooling towers are, amount of water surface area exposed the time of exposure the relative velocity of air passing over the droplets the RH of air the direction of airflow relative to water. Welcome to my channel. 
channel please like share comment and subscribe the bell icon and watching my video question number nine how the atmospheric or natural draft cooling towers are classified answer in atmospheric or natural cooling towers the natural air provides the required cooling without the use of fans this is classified into three types natural draft spray filled towers natural draft packed type towers hyperbolic cooling towers question number 10 how mechanical draft cooling towers are classified answer Mechanical draft cooling tower is classified into three types force draft tower, induced draft counterflow tower, induced draft cross flow tower. Question number 11 How the dry type cooling towers are classified? Answer The dry type cooling towers are classified into two types as follows Indirect dry type, or Heller cooling system, direct dry type cooling system. Question number 12 What is condenser subcooling? Answer Condenser subcooling comes after latent heat rejection in condenser. In this region no phase change takes place from steam to water droplets further it decreases the temperature of water entering into boiler feed pump to drum. It can be easily understood by Rankine cycle diagram. When a liquid is cooled below the saturated liquid temperature in a condenser, it is called subcooling. It increases the efficiency of system. Please like, share, comment and subscribe the bell icon and watching my video.